Well, if this is your first weekend, we are wrapping up our Chosen series. If you've been here the last few weeks, are you enjoying the Chosen series? The Chosen is a uh, movie series about the life of Jesus, and it's free on YouTube. It's free on the Chosen app. It's not on Netflix or anything else like that. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it on the Chosen app, and they are going after a billion people being able to watch this series, and we're going to watch another clip in this service today. And uh, the first week, Pastor Rob preached uh, about the redemption of Mary from Magdala. In week two, Jesus, uh, Jesus, I mean, he did preach this. Pastor Rob preached, Jesus loves the little children. And in week three, last weekend, we saw that Jesus heals and Jesus cleanses. And today, we are going to go to John chapter four. And we're going to talk about the woman at the well. And before we go there, I want to give a little bit of context. If you're new to church, try to always set it up like, you know, trying to bring you along the journey versus like, what is happening? I'm not sure. John chapter 3 is the famous verse, 316, for God so loved the world. Jesus is having a conversation with a religious man named Nicodemus. And after that moment, he gathers his disciples. And leading into John chapter 4, uh, word gets out that the Pharisees and the religious leaders are upset at Jesus, seeing people saved, seeing people believing in him as the Messiah and baptizing them in the name of Jesus. And, and they're getting upset. And so Jesus says, hey, let's it's, it's time for us to go. They're going to make their way to Galilee. And on the way, they make a pit stop. And we're going to read this story at this pit stop. But before we do, the pit stop is in Samaria. And the people in Samaria, they were enemies of the people of God, enemies of the Jews. There's not enough time today to go into all of the context. But I will share this. They had been fighting for years and years and years since the days of Nehemiah, saying Jewish people cannot marry Samaritans. They are, we are enemies. And uh, they... they the Jewish people didn't allow the Samaritans to come into Jerusalem to worship in the temple. They believed in God, but they only believed in the first five books of the Bible, the, the Pentateuch or the Torah. And, and the Jewish people, they believed also in the prophets, and they, say, they rejected them and said, we're enemies, and you cannot come into Jerusalem. And so the Samaritans built their temple on Mount Gazim. And about 150 years before this story, what we're about to read, the Jewish people went and destroyed the Samaritan's temple. These guys are enemies, but they say they serve the same God. And we're about to read this story together. About 2,000 years before this story, 2,000 years before this story, Jacob, the grandson of Abraham, digs a well. 2,000 years later, the Samaritan woman has this interaction with Jesus at the very same well. 2,000 years after, when Jacob was digging that well, God knew that someone who was an enemy of the people of God would have an interaction with Jesus and would become a friend. And 2,000 years before right now, today, Jesus hung on a cross and God knew 2,000 years ago that you could sit in this service or watch online and your life could be forever changed going from enemy to a friend of God. John chapter four, verse one. This is the longest one-on-one -on -one conversation that Jesus has recorded in scripture. We're gonna read 29 verses, hang with me. Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, Although Jesus himself did not baptize, but only his disciples, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria. He didn't have to. There was other routes, a little bit longer, a little bit safer to get to Galilee. But he had to because he had to meet the woman at the well. So he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. So Jesus wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It's interesting to think of Jesus, not just fully God, but in this moment, fully man. He was weary, and he sat down at the well. It was about the sixth hour, which would have been about noon. It's hot. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. It's just Jesus and the woman from Samaria. 
The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. That's a nice way to say it. The Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw water with. And the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself and did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never thirst again. The water that I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Verse 16, Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. That's where it gets real. Jesus said to her, you're right in saying I have no husband. For you've had five husbands. And the one that you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. (sighs) Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. She tries to change the subject. Jesus says to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews because Jesus came As a Jewish man. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to Him, I know that the Messiah is coming. He's called the Christ. When He comes, He will tell us all things. Get ready. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am He. He said the same thing in the Garden of Gethsemane, and people fell to the ground. He reveals himself to this Samaritan woman. I am the Messiah. I am the Christ. Just then, his disciples came back. They marveled that he was talking with a woman, but no one said, who do you you speak to? Why are you talking to her? So the woman left her water jar and went away into the town and said to the people, come and see a man who told me all that I've ever done. Can this be The Christ. Title of this message is the story that we just read, The Woman at the Well. Lord, we thank you for these moments in your presence. And we just pause again to recognize that your spirit is in the room. The living water that you offer is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is in the room. And we recognize your presence. And Lord, I pray that you'd speak to each and every person here today each and every person watching online, in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Amen. Have you ever had a conversation with somebody um, and they're talking and, uh, you know, maybe they have a profession that you don't or maybe they have some education that you don't or they've got a little bit of knowledge that you don't, but you're talking, you're trying to be a pleasant person, and so you're nodding and saying, yeah, well, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and uh, you're just you're going along, this is great, this is a great conversation. You know, I think we're both, you know, this is nice. And then they stop talking for you to respond and you realize in a panicking moment that you have no clue what they're talking about. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You're, you're speaking at a different level than me. This summer had the opportunity uh, to build a deck. And I went into the deck store, that's actually what it's called, and bought the materials. And um, I asked the guy, so what do you do? do? Like, how do we do it? (laughs) And he's like, well, you're going to do it. And I was like, okay, so I'm on my own, perfect. I asked my brother to help, he's a little bit more handy than me. And he starts explaining, you know, I'm just there by myself, listen to this guy. He starts explaining, like, step one, step two, step three. He's got the plans all here. And I'm nodding, going, this is perfect. Yeah, yeah, I got that tool, perfect. I don't have that. I think maybe we got to purchase a couple more things. This is nice, this is nice. And I thought I was understanding, but apparently he was speaking at a different level because I get into my backyard and just go, (sighs) I think think he said, 
take, take the siding off. And uh, so my brother and I, we cut, you know, the siding where we think the deck's going to go. And, uh, and then we didn't know step two from there. So I promise you, this is a true story. We go back to the deck store together uh, because my brother's a little bit more handy than me. We go and say, okay, you can just repeat what, what's the next, we don't, what's the next step? And he goes, he goes, perfect. Okay, you're at the beginning, right? Yep, we're at the beginning. We've barely done anything. And he goes, you didn't take the siding off, did you? I said, yep, that's the first thing we did. That's all we've done. And we, we screwed it up at the beginning. In this conversation that Jesus is having with the woman at the well, he is speaking at a different level than her. She wants to talk about wells and water, but he wants to talk about the kingdom. She wants to talk about worshiping at the mountain or in temples, but he, he wants to tell her that I am right in front of you. The living God, the Messiah, the Christ, I'm right here. He's speaking at a different level. And sometimes God, he speaks at a different level in, in the word where we're trying to grasp kingdom things. And God makes a way through the power of the Holy Spirit for us to be able to connect. And by the end of this conversation, it was two different conversations happening. Two different levels in this conversation. And by the end of it, her life is completely changed and they're on the same level, the same conversation. And maybe you who were far from the Lord, that have given your life to the Lord, filled with the Holy Spirit, you know what that feels like to say, I just don't get it. I don't understand. I'm, I don't understand the church. I don't understand these people that call themselves Christian. I'm not sure. I open the Bible and I just don't understand. But then there's a Holy Spirit, a living water type thing that happens in your life where you go, now I get it. Now I understand and everything's different. Now you've got a new filter on your life. That's what happens in this story. There's two conversations going on. In just a moment, we are going to watch that clip from The Chosen, but want to first set it up with understanding these two different levels that are happening. At first, it's wells and water. The Samaritan woman, she was drawing from two wells, Two wells that will not sustain. The first one is Jacob's well to get physical water. The second one is the well... Let's call it trying to find a man to satisfy her life and complete her. What wells are you drawing from that will not sustain? And Jesus says, if you knew who I was, you would ask me for living water that will sustain where you will never thirst again. Are you drawing from the wells of relationships, maybe like this woman, Drawing from the well of success, earthly success, or earthly pleasures? Are you drawing from a well of addiction, just trying to take the pain of this world away? What well are you drawing from? You were created as a human being in the image of God, different than the animals, as a human being in the image of God, with a hole in your soul that can only be satisfied by God. The Bible says that God set eternity in the hearts of man, different than the animals. So until you find Jesus, you will always be searching and drawing from wells, and you'll be out in the noonday under the sun trying to pull water that may, may be fun for a second, but it will not sustain. Psalm 63, 1, O God, you're my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Psalm 42, one and two. As the deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, the living God. Only Jesus can satisfy by pouring his Holy Spirit into your life. Isaiah 58, 11, And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places. He'll make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. With the water of the Holy Spirit comes cleansing, comes healing, comes forgiveness in the name of Jesus. As you give your life, surrender to him, comes with that, the living water, the Holy Spirit into your life to cleanse you, to free you, to make you new, to forgive you, 
You can be cleansed, healed, forgiven today. And with the water of the Holy Spirit comes satisfaction that is sustaining. She's talking about wells and water, and he's saying, I want to change everything for you. I want to sustain you. He goes from wells to worship. She tries to change the subject, but it's actually perfect for Jesus because after the Holy Spirit comes worship. When you give your life to Jesus, all you can do, all you can think about, all we should think about is how to glorify the name of Jesus. And so what she thinks is a ploy to get him off this subject of this crazy guy just talking about living water. I don't even know what he's talking about. He's asked for water. This is, you know, I'm a little nervous out here, this Jewish guy. I'm going to change the subject. Just, just let's talk about God. Let this the thing that maybe we have in common. Let's try to not die today. And it's perfect for Jesus. But again, he's talking at a different level. He says, hey, there's going to be a day that we, you don't have to go to the mountain anymore. You don't have to go to the temple anymore. But you can worship God wherever you are because God will be wherever you are. Wherever you are, wherever you go, whether you realize it or not, God is with you. He's omnipresent. There was a period of time before Jesus where the presence, the manifest presence of God was in the Holy of Holies. It was in one room in Moses' tabernacle, in David's temple, in Solomon's temple, in the rebuilt at this time, the rebuilt temple, but also Jesus is now on the scene. And she would have known that the presence of God wasn't even on her mountain, but it was in the temple, but they were trying to get to God. And Jesus, right in front of her, says, hey, there's going to be a new way. There's going to be a new day. And we live in it right now. We live in it right now where the Holy Spirit, you can talk to God anytime you want. You can worship God whenever you want. You don't have to have a, pri a high priest go before you, a, a physical man, high priest. You got Jesus going before you, ripping the veil, opening the door that you can be in the presence of God at any moment, at any time. It doesn't matter what you've done, what you've said, where you've gone, who you are, your education, your background, how much Bible knowledge you got. If you say, God, help me. God, show up in my life. God, if you're real, if you're out there, you can, you can talk to him and he hears you. And he loves you and he wants to forgive you, wants to have relationship with you. You have access to the Father through Jesus. Ephesians 2, 17 and 18. And he came, he, talking about Jesus, came and preached to you who were far off. Maybe you feel far off today. Jesus preached to the far off. And he also preached peace to those who were near, like Nicodemus in chapter 3. The woman at the well, Nicodemus, couldn't be more opposite people. A super religious man that knows everything to know. But he didn't know Jesus. And the woman at the well, she, she's, she's an enemy of God, an enemy of the people of God. She's, she's in shame because of her lifestyle. Jesus preached to both. For through Jesus, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. In him, you also are being built together in a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Hebrews 10, 19 through 22. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places, confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh, not just the veil, but through his body on the cross, broken and beaten, dying on the cross, raised again. Jesus made a way with his body, giving, sacrificing himself. It says, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water or living water. We're getting ready to watch what is portrayed in what we just read in John chapter 4. The conversations are at different levels, but they're about to align. She's about to wake up. She's about to get it. She's about to see you are the Messiah. You are the Christ. But as we watch this clip, Think about this. J.A. Finlay says this. At the beginning of the conversation, Jesus did not make himself known to her. But first she caught sight of a thirsty man, then a Jew, then a rabbi, afterwards a prophet, and last of all, the Messiah. She tried to get the better of a thirsty man. She showed dislike to the Jew. She heckled the rabbi. She was swept off of her feet by the prophet. 
and she adored the Christ. Let's watch this together. Would you give me a drink? Did you hear me? That's bad, huh? What? You, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a Samaritan, and a woman. I'm sorry. I should have said please. You know, it's not safe for you to be alone out here. Nor you. Why haven't you come with others? Why so late in the day? Don't women come to the wells in the, the cool of the morning? Yeah, well, none of them will be seen with me, so I have to come at noon in the heat, as you have so kindly reminded me. Why won't they be seen with you? Long story. I, I'd still like a drink of water if you can spare it. Amazing what a parched throat will do. Aren't I unclean to you? Won't you be defiled by this vessel? Maybe some of my people say that about your women, but I don't. Yeah? And what do you say? I say if you knew who I am, you'd be asking me for a drink. Really? And I would give you living water. Would. Except that you have nothing to draw water with, and this is a deep well. Besides, what do you need from me if you have your own supply of living water? Long story. But Jewish water is better than Samaritan water. Hmm? That's not what I said. Are you a better man than our ancestor Jacob, who dug this well? Your water is better than his? I know, Jacob. And everyone who drinks this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. Wouldn't that be nice? The water I give will become in a person a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Really? Yes, really. Prove it. First, go and call your husband and come back. I will show you both. I don't have a husband. You are right. You've had five husbands. And the man you're living with now is not your husband. <laughs> oh, I see. You're a prophet. You're here to preach at me. No. Usually the one good thing about coming here alone is I can escape being condemned. I'm not here to condemn you. I've made mistakes. Too many. But it's men like you who have made it impossible for me to do anything about it. How? Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you Jews insist Jerusalem is the only place for true worship. They say that because the temple is there. Yeah, exactly where we're not allowed. I'm here to break those barriers. And the time is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. So, where am I supposed to go when I need God? I've never received anything from God, but I couldn't thank him even if I did. Anywhere. God is spirit, and the time is coming and is now here that it won't matter where you worship, but only that you do it in spirit and truth. Heart and mind, that, that is the kind of worshiper he's looking for. It won't matter where you're from or what you've done. Do you believe what I'm telling you? <laughs> Until the Messiah comes and explains everything and sorts this mess out, including me, I don't trust in anyone. You're wrong when you say that you've never received anything from God. This Messiah you speak of, I am he. The first one was named Ramin. You were a woman of purity who was excited to be married. But he wasn't a good man. He 
hurt you, and it made you question marriage, and even the practice of your faith. Stop it. The second was Farzad. On your wedding night, his skin smelled like oranges. And to this day, every time you pass by the oranges in the market, you feel guilty for leaving him, because he was the only truly godly man you've been with. But you felt unworthy. Why are you doing this? I have not revealed myself to the public as the Messiah. You are the first. It would be good if you believed me. You picked the wrong person. I came to Samaria just to meet you. <laughs> Do you think it's an accident that I'm, I'm here in the middle of the day? I am rejected by others. I know, but not by the Messiah. And you know these things because you are the Christ. I'm going to tell everyone. I was counting on it. <laughs> Spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. It won't be all about mountains or temples. Soon. Just the heart. <laughs> you promise. I promise. This man told me everything I've done. Oh, he must be the Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Wait! Your water! You forgot your um. Foxy, your man, you told me everything I ever did! <laughs> Story's not over. So listen real close. She goes into Samaria and she reaches the entire village. Jesus said in that depiction, I was counting on him. And you've got the same mission as that Samaritan woman. That an encounter with Jesus, an encounter with Jesus can change your whole life. But then you are put on mission. Listen to this, John chapter 4, just a few verses later, verse 39. Many Samaritans from that town believed him, believed in Jesus because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with him. And he stayed there two days, and many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. A pastor said, Jesus came to that well as a hunter. He threw a grain before one pigeon that he might catch the entire flock. And right now, if you're listening to this message, he is pitching right now to your heart throwing something in front of you saying would you receive the living water so that you can go out and share it with the world the great commission is still our mission to be an evangelist in your workplace and to your family and in your neighborhood to go out let's not just have touchy-feely moments let's get on mission with God ask seek pray one woman who was an enemy of God turned a village into revival and it doesn't take pastors or ministers. It takes lay people. It takes everybody. God can do it through anybody saying, let's go save the world in Jesus' name. Let's, get, let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. And our vision for this year from Pastor Rob is ask, seek, pray. Pray that more would come to know Jesus Christ. And if you're in the room or watching online, today is the day of salvation. If you believe in Jesus, here's Evangelism 101, real fast. Live different. By living different, pursue holiness. Change your countenance. Tell your face what's happened in your heart. In community, live in community with other believers. The world's going to know that Jesus Christ is real, that he's the Lord, the Savior of the world by how we love each other. But how are they going to see you love each other in the church if you're not in community? Serve others. Live generously. 
Number two, evangelism 101. Don't just live different, speak different. No slander, no gossip, no filthy talk. Speak life, affirmation, encouragement, prophetic words. Speak what can happen in the future. Speak and see God do it. Believe through your words that God can do a miracle. Don't just speak different. You need to share. You need to share. It's not just let the world see how you live different or speak different. You need to share. What do you need to share? Who were you before Jesus? And who are you now? You need to share the miracles that God has done in your life. Has he done a miracle in your physical body? A miracle in your mind or emotional healing? Has he provided you and provided for you in miraculous ways? Has he restored relationships? What has he done? Share the miracles. Tell your testimony. The presence of God is all over your testimony. So if you don't know what to say, I don't know all the verses, I don't have the whole Bible memorized, share your testimony. Share the miracles and the presence of God, just like it was in the Ark of the Covenant, which was also called the Ark of the Testimony, is no longer in that box, but it is in your testimony as you share. Not just who who you were or who you are now or the miracles, but you need to share the gospel. Can this be the Christ? Can this be the Christ? That's what your friends, family, neighbors are going to say as you share the goodness of God. That once we were all sinners, once we were all far from God, but Jesus made a way through sacrificing himself on the cross, dying, being raised again, back to life. He stole the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He's alive and well today, sits at the right hand of the Father. And you have a way to the Father through Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through him. You can do it, and it doesn't matter what you've done. doesn't matter how much you know it matters the belief in your heart and the confession of your mouth that Jesus is the Lord of your life that God the Father raised him from the dead this is the gospel and you can be saved you need to share because living water doesn't stagnate inside it overflows John 7 37 through 39 the last verse I'll share on the last day of the feast the great day Jesus stood up and cried out if anyone thirsts let him come to me and drink whoever believes in me as the scripture has said out of his heart will flow rivers of living water you got to share this living water now this is this he said about the spirit whom those who believed in were to receive for as yet the spirit had not been given because Jesus was not yet glorified out of your heart will flow rivers of living water There was revival in Samaria, and we're praying for revival in Apple Valley, in the surrounding cities, in the Twin Cities. Let's go. If we can get one golf clap, let's get everybody praising God, believing that He can do it. He can do it. He can do it. He can do it. God, we pray right now for revival in our cities, revival in our church, revival in our hearts, that this would be a new day, that we would go after you in 2022 like never before, seeking your face, not just your hand. We want to see your face, God. We want to see our friends saved. We want to see our neighbors and co-workers in the entire city saved. We want to see our enemies saved. We want to see generations saved. God, would you send revival in the name of Jesus?